next question is skull based surgery codes and modifier 51. Um, Laura asked, how do you accurately code surgery of the skull base? Are the definitive codes considered to be a lesser code and is modifier 51 needed? Excellent question. This is a great question. So let's go to my answer page. And what I did is I did um, kind of a scan of the code so I could um, bring it with me to the hotel since I don't have my document camera. And this is basically page 312, and these are the guidelines. So the first thing we're going to answer is about the, the, the modifier 51, if we need it or not. Now, surgery of the skull base, if you picture your, you know, where your head connects to your neck, and if there was a lesion in that base of the skull, how would you get to it? It would be, you know, it's not like a lesion on the arm or the back where it's very easy to access it. So since it's so complicated, you, you really need a surgeon that has a certain skill set to be able to do that. And then another surgeon normally is the one that takes care of um, the lesion or tumor or whatever it is that they're, they're trying to, to remove. So if you look at the guidelines, it talks about approach procedures and definitive procedures. So the approach procedure is described according to the anatomical area involved. And then the definitive procedure describes the repair, biopsy, resection, or excision. So normally, according to the guidelines, the surgical management of lesions involving the skull base often requires the skills of several surgeons of different surgical specialties working together or in tandem. These operations usually are not staged for, because of the need for definitive closure. Obviously, if they're going to get the area exposed, you need to go in and, you know, take care of the, um, the lesion. So there are two codes. Let me just skip down a little bit to um, a screenshot of the actual codes. So here you can see approach procedures. And this first one says, I know it's a little blurry, but 61580 cranial facial approach. Okay. And then, you know, so that's, that's one type. You have the anterior approaches, you have the middle approaches, and you have these posterior approaches. Then you have the definitive procedure start. And you can see my note here, the definitive procedure must relate or link to the approach procedure. So if you're doing base of an, um, a base of anterior cranial fossa, for your definitive procedure, you should be doing an, an anterior cranial fossa approach, okay? So you can see how there's separate codes for the approach and separate codes for the definitive procedures. So the question is, do, do we need to use modifier 51? If you have two different surgeons doing both piece, doing a piece themselves, one does the, the approach and one does the definitive procedure, then no, you don't need modifier 51. However, if one surgeon, these are from the guidelines, performs more than one procedure, i.e. the approach and the definitive, then both codes are reporting adding modifier 51. So it's right there in the guidelines to the secondary additional procedure. So I suspect, Linda, you already knew that, but you're just confirming it. And then what you want to know is like, okay, when we have modifier 51, we normally put it on the lesser valued code because they pay 100% of the first surgical code, and then 50% of the subsequent ones, and 51, you know, would do that. So how do you know the value? Because her other part of her question was, are the definitive codes considered to be lesser codes? Um, so let's take a look. Um, I went to find a code again. Do, 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 do. And I just used a, uh, an interior, uh, I'm sorry, an approach code, 61580 and a definitive code 61600. And sure enough, the approach code has a higher RVU. Because if you think about it, it's actually harder to get the area exposed and get to it than it is to go excise the tumor. So how did I know that? I went to the NCCI edits validator, 
and it gave me these two things. Now, I used that not because I was checking NCCI edits, but because I knew it would give me both codes like this so I could see the descriptions stacked on top of each other. And here's the RVUs. The approach, craniofacial approach, has an RVU of 78.77. And the definitive procedure, the resection, has an RVU of 67.89. Both are very high because this, after all, is brain surgery. So um, that's how that, that breaks down. And my little you know, plug, of course, at the end is if you need help understanding CPT modifiers better, consider getting our on-demand CEU webinar called Modifiers. It's all about the money. And I'll show you real quick the link. If you go to the codingcertification.org website, and you click on medical coding webinars, it'll take you here. And so we can see here that it's um, 67 bucks for the online only and 87 for DVD and online. And it's worth 1.5 CEUs for those of you that uh, are certified, consider getting that to add to your, your arsenal. Also, um, we have hot, hot, hot off the press is our new giveaway, um, which is the Modifier Decision Grid Tool. It's actually a part of this Modifiers It's All About the Money presentation. I taught this, oh my goodness, in 2000, I think, at the AAPC conference and taught it for three or four years after that. This little two-page um, tool was, was very, very popular and people were like, oh, I love this. I'm going to laminate it. I'm going to stick it up on my desk. So, um, definitely uh, check that out. Just go to codex, codingcertification.org and you'll see this graphic on the right on the sidebar. Just click it and you can um, get it for free. Download it. It's a two-page PDF. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.